The battery exploded and caused a fire, killing the 42-year-old. His wife is critical and two daughters are being treated at a hospital in Vijayawada, Andhra Pradesh. इलेक्ट्रिक स्कूटर्स में आग लगने की बढ़ती घटनाओं के बारे में बताएंगे पिछले एक हफ्ते में ऐसी चार घटनाएं हो चुकी हैं and now an electric vehicle battery explosion has claimed one life and has left two others injured in Hyderabad electric bikes pranati sestunai tajaga vijayawada lo maro electric bike pele poindi ee ghatanalo no okaru pranalu kolpanatuga telustundi Tola Electric is recalling 1441 units of its electric two wheelers in the wake of incidents of vehicles catching fire according to a company statement How the cell performs in a lab is very different from how the battery pack will perform in the field and that's how we make sure ki if we are continuously cycling cycling it at different C ratings so what a lot of people are missing right now in India is the cell testing and validation stage we use cylindrical cells and uh, we arrange them in series and parallel this is not just aluminum it's a aluminum alloy mixed with a proprietary metal which allows for a high thermal conductivity motors ip68 rated so it's not 67 but 68 so it's a swap station where we have a 12 slot system it also have a cooling unit hi hello namaskara i am pradeep and hope you guys are doing great as you can see here i am in the hop electric and this place is called launch pad because this is where all it started so i had a lot of questions and uh, so hop electric cto and the co-founder Uh, is there to help me out with this so i had i was shooting him a lot of questions he was helping me out so i thought why not share that information with you guys as well because in the recent times we are having a lot of incidents where safety of the ev is questioned so how is hop solving all that and uh, let me introduce uh, the co-founder and the cto here hey brother hi hi pradeep tell us a little bit about yourself yeah sure man so rahil the side i am the co-founder cto of hop electric So this place is Launchpad. This is where the real magic happens. We, uh, this is a development center, one of its kind, and we develop batteries, we develop powertrain, and all the uh, other electric vehicle components here. So the whole whole system design and system integration happens here, and then we take it into a production facility, which is nearby, uh, from 10 kilometers from here, and then we have the production facilities, which can facilitate around 1.2 lakh units per annum. So let me show you now. Yes. So we got the special access to the R and D, which not a lot of people have. So let's go inside so that all the questions know will be shown out with the practical example. So let's go inside. All right, Rahil. Uh, yeah. So thanks for having me in the R and D center. So my first question is: There is a lot of incidents that are happening around the EV in the recent times. Correct. And we not a lot of people have definite answers why it's Correct. happening. Correct. And uh, what kind of research happening behind it as well? Since we have the access today, show us a little bit. Uh, about what are the safety precautions that you guys are taking right. explain us sure so uh, i'll start with the fundamentals why ev batteries catch fire and then also why how can we what can we do to prevent these right so let me take you around to the so there are primarily three reasons why ev batteries catch fire the first one being poor cell quality the second one being poor battery pack design and the third one being uh, not a good quality battery management system so to say you know when you include these three uh, if you got any of the, those things wrong it's a recipe for disaster and that's what's happening in the ev ecosystem right now that people either are not using good quality cells they are using chinese off take uh, b grade c grade cells they are not investing a lot of money into good quality and processes when it's come to battery pack design so uh, in the battery pack design fundamentally if you have a good mechanical design a good thermal design and a good electrical design you are sorted but most of the time people want to uh, have a cheaper price point for the battery pack and that is why they are not investing much on the processes of mechanical design safety uh, thermal safety which is a huge huge uh, factor behind these fires because once you have a thermal validated uh, pack you are not prone to ev fires then you are safe right and then electrical safety of course with short circuit protection over voltage protection all those things and then comes the bms part where uh, sensing and controlling so there are two parts to the bms it monitors all the touch points data points parameters it also you know uh, controls them when okay. it is out of hand okay. so that's where the bms comes in it is an intelligent monitoring and controlling system which controls each and every cell how what is the health of it 
what is the depth of it, each cell, and how we can manage each cell effectively with respect to mechanical thermal sure. safety. Yes. My next question is, so, see, at end users will not have access to the battery cells. Sure. See what kind of cells that is used in the battery sure. pack. Sure. But here we have quite a few examples. Sure. So sure. show us what cells that mostly are used and why it's important to have good quality cells. Yeah, sure. So, you know, so there, uh, there are array of cells and grades which is presently sure. available in the market. Uh, if I have to show you, uh, so these are 18650, these are 2170, to 21700 cells, these are 32140 cells, uh, which we have uh, access for, for the uh, in proprietary development which we are doing in-house right now. So, what, so there are two types of chemistries available, let's start with that, right? So, there are LFP and then there's NMC, right? NMC is nickel magnesium cobalt, LFP is lithium iron phosphate. So, with NMC, it is prone to much for fire hazard or thermal runaway because uh, it's an active chemistry. With the LFP, it's a mo more safer chemistry, it's give, it gives more cycle life, yeah. but uh, it has its own issues like uh, pro not proper balancing over a lifetime, uh, low energy density compared to NMC and other factors. So we have a trade-off and uh, the chemistry of the cell and the uh, selection of the cell has to be done by the application. Right. Is it going into energy storage packs? Is it going into two-wheeler, four-wheeler? So from that, you s start with the application, you scale down on the cell, okay. then you create a model of a cell, how that cell would uh, perform in the real world. Correct. And then from there, you start the battery pack design. Correct. Correct. So what a lot of people are missing right now in India is the cell testing and validation stage, which So they that's what's skip. happening here, right? Cell testing. Yeah, yeah. So what we do is key for each cell that we uh, select for the particular application, uh, we test them uh, between four to six months in a lab. And that is an accelerated testing, which gives us results for like two or three years. Correct. So we compress that two or three years timeline into a uh, month's time so that we know accelerated in an accelerated way that how the cell will perform in the field, right? Correct. But that is not enough because how the cell performs in a lab is very different of how the battery pack will perform in the field. Real so we world. have uh, steps and processes to make sure when the cells are converted into packs, so cell into model, model into pack. Correct. The pack needs to perform on the pack, right? So we do first testing and validation on the cell level then we do characterization and modeling so for the cells. So what's happening here in the machine? So what, what is happening is right now, we this is called a cycling. So we are uh, cycling it at different C ratings to make sure if the C rating of the vehicle, so when you pull out the throttle, you extract a lot of current from the battery pack. And that battery pack extracts a lot of current from each individual cell. Correct. So you need to make sure that high C levels and high C ratings, these cells should perform. Right. So we cycle them at high C ratings to see if there is a continuous performance expected from the battery pack. What is the health of the battery pack after certain cycles? That's what we make sure by our testing and validation. So we test those cells in, at a worse conditions to cycle like uh, what will happen after 400 cycles, after 1000 cycles. So here what's happening is they're charging and discharging at a rapid rate. At a rapid at rate. A so it's not, at not a standard rate which is given by the manufacturers, but we do at a rate that is expected by the customer. Correct. Right. So we do those testing here. We do type of a abuse testing so that uh, we know what is the breaking point for the cell, what is the breaking point for the other uh, Correct. different type of chemistries, and then we take it ahead for the battery pack. Design. All right. So we understood a little bit about the cells now. See, cells are not the only thing. So you have Correct. to keep multiple cells in a battery pack. Correct. So you have to make a battery pack. Sure. Before that, before that, I'll show you how we do it. Uh, so if you can see this, uh, coming closer. So we have data over what we have collected from the cells, right? And then we also are cycling it continuously for other different temperature levels. So we know the temperatures. Can you? We know the temperatures and what are the temperatures level going for the cells. And that's how we make sure that if we are continuously cycling, cycling it at different C ratings, what is the maximum and the minimum temperature the cell goes in? Different cell. Okay. Thirty-four point zero. Okay. Yeah. So you know the ambient temperature for human uh, for the Indian roads in the summers uh, goes above 45 degrees right? 45. in certain areas. So we are in Jaipur, standing in Jaipur, Rajasthan right Rajasthan. now at the peak of the summers. right? Yeah. So right now the temperature outside is 44 degrees. Okay. But still we have the testing and validation data where we have crossed 60 degrees temperatures on the pack level still the cells are able to perform at their desired C rating. Correct. That's the magic we do because we take care of the thermally uh, stable pack and we take care of how the cell will perform at those temperatures. So we already know what are the outcomes. And from there, we design the software and the BMS 
to modulate the current and voltage parameters. So as soon as you get the cells, so first check it yeah. the, with the number of cycles with the yeah. rapid charge and discharge yeah. and also to check how that cell performs with the temperature as yeah, well, yeah. how much thermal output is happening. Correct, correct. How so much different, heat it produces. Different C ratings, what is the thermal output, what is the electrical output, what is the structural output, all those things. So here at the cell level, it's not much about the uh, mechanical strength, but it's mostly about how the cell will perform in electrical and thermal conditions. Correct. And also my next question is, see you can't take an electric scooter and test in every city, right? Correct. That's not possible. So, but if you take as Indian demography, a geographical location as in India, which has coldest place up north right. to uh, summer here in uh, Gujarat, again right. cold in northeast, right. again if you go to Chennai it's super hot. Right. So different climatic conditions right. but you right. can't have different scooters for each region. Right? Correct. You need to have one product which can cater for everyone. Correct. So how do you get that product, how can, how can you achieve that safety? Yeah, so uh, this is a very good question actually. So because India is a very diverse country in terms of both population and geographies, Correct. what we intend to do is create packs that are uh, that are able to run in a diverse set of conditions. Correct. What that means is we will design packs which can go from minus 20 degrees. So it can work in say uh, areas like Ladakh where the temperatures are very north of like uh, below zeros to say Chennai or Rajasthan as we speak where the temperatures are as high as 50 40, degrees sometimes. 45, 50. 50 yeah. degrees, right? So we try to design that using thermal stability. And then BMS come have an important role here. So BMS, so why the ambient temperature is increasing, nah? the cell's performance in itself is, uh, they try to drop. So they, their intent is to save their own uh, life. Correct. So what they do rather is they, they drop on the performance when the temperature increases. And that's why you see when the temperature increases, most of the motor or the powertrains or the electric vehicle companies cut off. Correct. That cut off because of the safety to safety. prevent the pack from going, going to say thermal runaway or other conditions. What we do, is we try to create uh, by our own unique our proprietary design a thermal setting which let the, temp uh, let the, let the cell uh, perform on its peak level while not taking the ambient temperature inside the battery pack more than what is desired. Correct. So that's how we solve it. So if the temperature is in negative, so that will do passive heating in order to protect the temperature and give it to a suit, uh, suitable range. Right. Similarly, if the temperature have uh, risen be, uh, above 40 or 45, 50 degrees, what we'll do is try to cool them down using our proprietary techniques which dissipates heat with, with a very thermal conductive material. Correct. So, uh, we try to solve this using technology uh, because like the petrol bikes, they are uh, perceived as a single point of mobility solution which can run anywhere. Correct. In electric vehicles right now, because of the technologies we are uh, using, it is a limitation. Right. And people do uh, comment on other different type of technologies that can be. Lithium ion right now is the only commercial viable technology electric vehicle industry can use, right? right. And we need to make it safe. And that's right. our responsibility as all of the community. So what we try to do is, by using technology, we try to solve these problems and we try to accelerate the adoption of electric mobility so that people have trust and confidence on the products right. and they know that will not catch fire or that will perform on its peak uh, when, I, when I need them. Right. So, yeah. And also guys, uh, for a lot of you who are watching, you might have a lot of background noise as well. So don't mind that because machines are running in full tilt. So ignore that part. Yeah, so it's a very loud room because uh, our machines uh, run on a lot of electricity and a lot of noise. That's what we do. So our engineers run all on a lot of pizza and coffee and our machines run on a lot of electricity and noise. That's how we try to call it. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, so we understood more about cells and how the testing happens. Now, how do we put together uh, uh, cells in a battery pack in a safer manner? Because there is a lot of things that happens there as well. So let's see a battery pack, if we can show us a sure, battery sure. pack. Sure, sure. So I, I think I will have one open for you. So uh, this is an example for a battery pack. <clears throat> so yeah. what we do is ki we try to uh, we use cylindrical cells and uh, we arrange them in series and parallels to the desired voltages and the desired capacity we want and in order to do that we use different materials for thermal insulation for mechanical insulation so that it is prone to shock vibration noise so yeah. NVH is one of so what is happening is ki before this there were people making a lot of battery packs but that one one thing they fail to understand is the battery pack needs to be mounted on a vehicle Correct. which is prone to a lot of disturbances from the environment, be it the noise, vibration, vibration. Uh, jerks from the road, everything, right? And that battery pack needs to be structurally and mechanically strengthened so that those does not translate to, say, 
uh, breakage in wire inside the pack or uh, something in cell so that it can get short circuited. Right now, the, most of the files you see are because of the poor battery pack design. They're exactly. not because of the cells. Cells might work, but because of the design, they are actually uh, getting short circuited inside and uh, causing EV fires. So here you can see you have multiple cells, yeah. quite a lot of cells yeah. which are mounted in so panels. So these, these are for R&D purposes, so we do a different lot for production. We try to fiddle around with these packs for the R&D purposes and test what can go wrong. Okay. So And we use all tier 1, tier 2, tier 3 cells just to make sure if uh, what is commercially viable to all of the customers and what is not. So this you see is a tier one cell company, uh, also used by uh, Tesla. I cannot name the uh, manufacturer, but yeah. So we use spot welding as of now. We are already uh, also been testing wire bonding and other different techniques to make sure that it has single cell fusing. So we test them. We try to uh, close on one depending on the pack configuration and again the application. You know. Okay. So in electric vehicle industry, what uh, the misconception is key. All of the people try to standardize things. It's not applicable here because depending on the application in, inside the two-wheeler itself, a low-speed scooter might not need wire bonding or probably a high-speed scooter or high discharge rate application needs to have wire bonding to make sure the pack is Correct. safe. I was about to ask that question next because in the current mar market, you have a lot of performance scooters, right. not something that you have 45, 60 kmph scooters. Right, right. Now it's in excess of 100 now right. and to have that amount of dis discharge or current flow you need to have a solid battery bag Correct. because that will put a lot of stress on the battery bag Correct. so what are manufacturers doing to withstand that in the longer run because right. the faster is discharging charging discharging degradation also happens right so quality of cells matters a lot definitely and let's say i also have one question here let's say we have multiple cells here right so let's say one of them right. have a thermal runaway or right. Right. damage because of a poor cell quality right so what happens there. Right. So uh, I'll, I'll give you a sneak peek around what we are doing right now. So what we are using, uh, we are using a unique technology which can prevent any, if say uh, for any reason a single cell is trying to go into thermal runaway or probably is uh, limited by its partners. So a single cell can cause a battery fire right. and that's what we try to prevent. So first we, do, we try to prevent that cell from going into thermal runaway but if it goes, it gets opened circuited from the rest of the pack so that it is the overcharge short circuit protection is maintained. So what I mean by that is if a single cell is trying to get into a thermal runaway, it will be isolated from the other members. Okay. In order ki ab wo ek jal ke khatam ho jata. Okay. So it burns and it diminishes. Because the problem we are seeing is once it starts now, we yeah. can't stop yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's a continuous chain. Correct. So it happens because uh, usually when the battery pack design is not good, and because of any mechanical jerk, it gets punctured and it one cell is going into thermal runaway, it short circuits the other cells. Okay. And when other cells are in short circuit, so a series and chain of reaction for thermal runaway begins into the pack. And one after the other, it will just uh, blow, blow. And uh, is it an advantage for you guys just because you guys are staying in Rajasthan, you have an ideal condition to test in super hot conditions so that it can run anywhere in India. If it runs in Rajasthan, it's good for most of our Indian conditions. So you can say that, but uh, we are present in 14 states, pan-India, and we have that advantage that we have dealers and we have feedback loops around India. So Rajasthan is one advantage because we have the extreme conditions, and while we are testing, we know what can go wrong because if anything goes wrong here, uh, if, if everything is safe here, it will be safe everywhere, everywhere else, yeah. right? Yeah. So that is how we are testing in the battery packs. But it is also very advantageous for other seasons as well because Rajasthan gives you a very diverse set of conditions. In the winters, it's very chilly right now. Uh, it's very chilly uh, when it's, it's in, in, at the night. So we also test the packs and how they perform at the night, like zero degrees, five yeah. degrees, six yeah. degrees. So yeah, yeah. all that happens. But we have tested the packs across India. I'll tell you more about it when we discuss about the OXO. I don't know how these batteries are withstanding, but we are not able to withstand <laughs> this heat at all. Because you can see us, we are properly cooked. And in the night, you can't even go out because it's super cold. Right. I mean, it's <laughs> compared to Bangalore, no? If you are a ba if you are someone from Bangalore, oh, this is... This is very hot, right? Yeah, so yeah, it's peak of the temperature right now. I think it's going to go above 45 degrees for some days or weeks. And then it goes down because the monsoon will come. I'll show you the how we also test the batteries here. So once we are done with the cells, and once we take that into pack design, structural, mechanical, thermals, uh, and electrical, uh, we make a pack out of it. And then we do it in both environment. We have environmental chambers which test the pack in different thermal settings. Also, we do electrical testings 
which give us a lot of data. So if you come closer, I can show you. So the battery is discharging, right? It's, right now it's a charging, but the temperature is still 33 degrees only. So you can, it has to validate that, uh, focusing here, right? So it is a focus that even after, say, charging at a good C rating, because the pack uh, is a lower AH pack. So Correct. it's a lower H pack. So even with a good C rating of charging, it is not moving above 33, 35. The maximum we get is 35 degrees, which is very acceptable because the ambient is even more than that. Correct. Right. So once uh, we go, we go and dash it into the fields, we have a good stable temperature and thermal profile, what we call it, to actually get into the production level. So we test any or each pack from nine to 12 months and across India to just validate if it's working or not. And once you have validated, when then it goes to production. So tell us more about this machine, what we are holding. Yeah, sure. So this is actually a battery environmental chamber where we, where we put the batteries and we simulate different type of conditions like uh, 45 degrees temperature, 20 degrees temperature, zero degrees temperature. And then uh, once we do that, uh, we in, uh, simulate what type of electrical output or we benchmark against what is normal against what are the thermal uh, temperatures and we see what are the deficiencies. And we try to solve those deficiencies by uh, increasing the safety in the thermal, increasing the technology so that we can have better thermal performance from the pack. So you guys keep the battery packs inside this and... Yeah, yeah it's, it, it's inside this and uh, we have different settings. So so this, this is how the data is being collected. Can you uh, show the data? Okay, do this one. So you can see so these two are discharging and these, this is charging and we have different C ratings to facilitate the pack. And this is the data where we have the, uh, we all our BMS which is into production are smart BMS. So they monitor data and they can control data as well. Okay. So if something is going wrong, the BMS can instruct a cell to cut off. Correct. Similarly, we can have that, he, is it going wrong or not, we can monitor using the uh, data. And all the packs are smart BMS, so we get continuous uh, relay of data, which we use to uh, analyze, which we use to increase life, and the most important use case is the product development cycle feedback loop. Yeah. So other thing is, I've seen active cooling and pa passive cooling yeah, yeah. systems having in the scooters yeah. as well. Yeah. So you can't have acting active cooling all the time. Right. And it's not required at some places. Let's say if you're not a performance-oriented scooter. Right. Right. So for your case. For your scooters, Hop Electric, in the future scooters, is there any plans to have it more safer to get this, get away from this thermal runaways? So definitely, the active cooling methods and force cooling methods are being explored. These are very good methods to cool the pack. Uh, but right now, till date, and uh, you've been validated in the morning, we have been successfully uh, been delivering good performance and good C ratings with passive cooling. Correct. So what we are doing is actually trying to solve this using materials. So what is happening right now, ki people are trying to liquid cool things or, or all those things. That is good. But Tesla. yeah, everyone else. But what we believe that next generation of disruption in thermals and in engineering. So I'll tell you a little bit about how engineering works in general. So in engineering, you can take any rating and it can go above anything. But if you take about a motor, it's a three kilowatt motor, you can take it above 12 kilowatt, 15 kilowatt as well. What happens is the boundary condition of any engineering problem are set by the thermals. That if you get beyond this power, it will heat up. And that's why you need to cool it to make it more powerful, right? The same motor can give you more performance when it is in good thermal conditions. And that's how the same thing goes to the battery pack as well. It's an engineering problem. And how do we solve it? So there are two methods of solving this problem. The first method is incremental changes over the current one, like getting it force cool or liquid cool to cool the pack from the external intrinsic materials. The second is changing the materials completely. Correct. And by changing the materials, I mean material science. So if something has a good thermal conductivity or some say, for example, uh, I'll show you around for the aluminum shell we have built. It's a new alloy and different type of uh, features. But this is not just aluminum, it's a aluminum alloy mixed with a proprietary metal which allows for a high thermal conductivity. Oh. So anything that goes inside is very fastly dissipated outside. Okay. So that's how we Good are... conductor of yeah, 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 very, electricity. Yeah, so what happens is if pack is heating up, no? we have good channels that process heat from the cell 
to the exterior casing yeah. and this take care of set from the exterior casing to the outside con using convention and other methods so okay. what we're trying to do is solve the thermal issues by passive cooling but innovating on the materials and how we can achieve those same thermal conditions uh, optimizing the thermal conditions getting the most performance out of the pack and also there are conditions like where you have to ride in the water right. and uh, how do you waterproof it because that's very right, very important right, as well right, right. like your phones <coughs> will have IP67 rated right. and now your scooter should also be IP67 rated so what are you guys doing? Sure, sure I'll show you so we uh, design our own motors so by design we work with our manufacturers to get the uh, motors IP68 rated so it's not 67 but 68 it's for, it was full in the morning so we keep on draining it so uh, right now you can see the motor is working. So this motor is rotating from last three months continuously. We just keep changing the batteries and charge it, but this motor never stops. Okay. And this is to validate that even in the water temperatures. So we, so we are present in. We are not yet present in Maharashtra, but we will be this year. So Bombay and good example. Though. Yeah, Bombay <laughs> and then places where the water logging is a problem, right? Correct. So they have a lot of insecurities about what if my vehicle is stalled in say somewhere where there's a huge collection of water and then what will happen to the vehicle because end of the day they have the thought that it's an electric thing and electric thing don't combine well with the water right okay. so th to address those insecurities we actually release a lot of articles and we also do a lot of testing on our powertrain and system so both our battery systems and motor systems are ip67 rated but it goes beyond that because we have been testing it underwater as well in the swimming pool so uh, videos of which will be shared soon but uh, what I can say, the, motor, the water will not be a problem to the scooters or the battery pack because we make sure the, uh, it does not create any type of safety or mechanical problem. So uh, you can see here like the water is running continuously and three months it has been running. We test it for all the vehicles we do and we then once validated we get into production. So these are some of the uh, products that you have in the R&D which is under testing purposes. Yeah, yeah, so we make them, we break them and then we also try to test what is working, what is not working. So you know, uh, very, uh, we, have been, we will be launching our electric motorcycles very soon. So this is the updated version of that. I cannot talk much about this but yeah, <laughs> uh, we also is in the works I right can now. Talk, huh? <laughs> So yeah. you will you will know about it very soon. Yes. So uh, and then we test about the controller. So uh, one more advantage that we have is that all the systems uh, are connected and smart. So our battery BMS system is very smart, which okay. is able to read and write data. Our motor controller system is very smart, which is able to read and write data. So to say, for example, a very similar use case: if a father wants his child to lock at a speed, he can use it. Uh, he can do it using a phone, mm -hmm. and uh, the child. It's, known as a parental control, the child can only reach at a speed of 45-50 as desired by the father. Correct. Similarly for the uh, women's safety. So uh, keeping the system connected helps you optimize the bike over the time with software okay. and also keeping your uh, siblings and all other people safe. And that's what you want. Safety and performance and features out of the bike. And that's what we're trying to give. We are making our bikes hardware capable of smart systems. So in the future, when we have the proper update and data, for any specific feature uh, and for we, 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 I can give you a short example that most people put TPMS or tire pressure monitoring, monitoring systems, systems yes. into the bikes to monitor the tire pressure of the vehicle because it directly correlates with the range. If Correct. you have a lower tire pressure, you will get lesser range because lesser. the motor will work more in order to get that type of speeds or range, Correct. right? But in our case, we are not using TPMS. We have smart ML algorithms which actually classifies from the speed and torque characteristics of the tire. We know on a normal day when the tire is full, these are the torque speed curves. Correct. But there is a slight dissipancy in those torque speed curves. So that tells us something is wrong. So either on the driver side or on the that. And with the prediction filters we already have in place and we are improving over with the data, uh, we'll be able to tell you with 99% accuracy that if the tire, ha uh, def tire is deflated or not. And that is... Uh, that is uh, the type of magic we'll be able to do using the smart hardware. So we will not invest in the TPMS hardware, but rather a smart hardware on the controller and the BMS side so that we can correlate that with the data. And with the data, we can tell the user to inflate the tires because not the tire is low without Correct. a TPMS. Correct. Yeah, and also there were recent incidents of uh, battery packs because most of the scooters from Hop 
or removable except the next one that's going to come up very soon the non removable battery so if you have a removable battery the tendency that let's say you are staying in an apartment that you take your battery and charge it at your home is it safe because a lot of people are skeptical right now so i would say it is not and there are probably a lot of reasons of this because right now electric vehicle industry is in the pre checkout phase and by pre checkout phase i mean a lot of people are developing and deploying things which are not tested and validated enough and there is no clear winner for the technology and for the process that is being established correct so it's a risk and that risk has been transferring from these dealers slash manufacturers to the consumer and consumer is taking a risk while charging the battery inside their house okay it's a big risk so uh, what we are coming up with and we'll talk about it more on the other videos that uh, control environment charging is better suited for the customer rather than getting the battery inside and charging because you know most of the thermal cases have the probability of occurring while charging so discharging is not much of a problem but charging, charging. rather is a, a big problem and charging your battery inside a house can be a good fire hazard for the home and we i don't suggest charging inside the house but we don't have a choice no yeah well right now of course well, I, as, as i mentioned that uh, the industry is in pre checkout phase but i believe very soon because of the battery swap stations and battery charging stations for the charging points we'll be able to have a good enough density that will suffice and service the electric vehicles which are running around you said the controlled environment right. i think that's something that's the right, big right, machine uh, come i'll show you something so it's a sneak it's a sneak peek uh, to our swap station so i cannot show you much but just this so it's a swap station where we have a 12 slot system and uh, it's controlled by a master all these are slave boards we have a rectifier slash a charger at the end of it and then uh, these swap stations it, it also have a cooling unit the cooling unit take care of uh, controlling the uh, thermal characteristics inside the box where the battery pack is connected and charging don't get confused so this is the opposite this back is the back side of the this is the rear side of the pack i'll so show you the you front see, side you see here this is a what's happening behind the scenes correct so battery pack you can insert it this box whatever you have yeah. which i am planning to make a dedicated video hope right. that happens fingers crossed so i'll share the inputs importance and how useful the battery infra going to be because that's something that's going to go big in india sure. very so not a lot of people are realizing that but it's going to go big in india for sure is what i believe what do you think correct correct so we've been investing a lot so we were the first ones in india to launch an electric battery swap network for the electric two wheeler ego system in jaipur doing the pilot from past 18 months and being successful in riding those we have collected a lot of data testing and validation has been already done and this year we'll be scaling like crazy so watch out for the space and i can only tell you that this is going to be very big in india uh, for any category that is less than 10 to 15 kilowatts it makes sense but any category before uh, above 15 kilowatts i think charging would be a good option charging fast charging can be a good option yeah okay so uh, can you give us any sneak peeks of your next upcoming models or something which uh, you guys sneak peeks maybe sure. for our audience so let me take you to my design room now so yeah so we are in my uh, we are in our design room now and i can't show you much about the design space but uh, and of course it's in works uh, yeah. but i can give you a little corner for the sneak peek that's what we are working on and what we will be delivering in uh, next one to three years uh, so let me call my uh, lead design and then probably we can talk more about that taran so here at hop electric we are focusing more on mobility so uh, mobility not just made in making automobiles we focus on energy and automotive both so uh, here in india today you can see all the vehicles what are coming up in the market are all consistent and designs are very diluted so we as indians are very much connected to our emotional values very much connected to our belongings not just that culturally also and emotionally also so somewhere our design uh, philosophy is going to follow that making some designs that are in like literally inspired from cultures and uh, inspirations from nature probably say human existence rocks anything coming up from nature say religions various uh, natural uh, existence and uh, what i want to talk more about today is our design process what happens so first we'll go with our ideations and all the conceptualizations one is going to be a eureka sketch then we'll come up with the digital sketching 
then comes is prototyping. You can see prototyping is that process wherein you literally build up yeah, 3D surfaces <laughs> and models. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, actually we are literally shifting our studio, so there is not enough displayed. Yeah, and uh, then comes testing processes and something what I want to show right now is, so this what you see is something from energy, not really products or automotive. This is a charger, universal charger that's going to be mounted on the walls. And so anybody can literally come and charge. So yeah. Uh, that's about it, I guess. Yeah. So design, with, with respect to design, we are actually following a very dynamic route, yeah. which allows us to build products so uh, at the very core, we are a technology company, which is at the intersection between energy and mobility. Okay. And we are trying to solve problems, not create products. So while solving problems, we need to create products. And that's how we focus on the design language. Ki I have how, quite a few interesting designs here. I can yeah, see a yeah, lot yeah. of unique things. We have a, I want to give you a small sneak peek, maybe a second or something, about the next one, which is going to launch about in a month or two. So this is what it's here. <laughs> <laughs> I know you have not seen, but we're gonna have the launch very very soon yeah. so thank you so much brother for so helping much. us and explaining us everything yeah. and also thank you so and much also, brother i want to add another one thing so uh, electric segment today i would say is a very new thing it's like a newborn baby i think it's time to go crazy with things why calling it a two-wheeler or a scooter it's time to get literally something new what people have not seen something right. unexplored or unexperimented yeah that's it so uh, thank you so much guys and I hope you guys like the video as well. So what's going to come next is more about the charging infra and I am super super excited for it because whatever we have there, no, it's super exciting. Nothing like what we have in the market. So I'm going to show that and before we do that, subscribe to the channel and stay connected and drop your comments. What do you think about the thermal runaways that's happening in the market and all the incidents that happen? Can you relate to that points? Let me know in the comment section. Until next time. Right, safe, wear your helmets, go electric. Bye-bye. This is our answer to every consumer, every uh, you know, ICE user to make a switch to electric mobility. You get a card, you just uh, click here, which is um, uh, you know swapping through the IC card. You put your card here. The balance gets deducted you know, into the system. This uh, opens up. 